Hi and welcome to another tune from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the pop effect in Blender 2.79. I have a link in the description that will link you to the video as to why I'm using 2.79. You know, but for now we're gonna go straight into the tutorial, and you can watch that if you want to. So we have our 3D viewpoint in front of us, and we have a cube that we need to delete. So first things first. We're going to set up the 3D viewpoint. So the first thing we're going to do is delete this cube. You can pre delete it by hitting delete on the keyboard, X on the keyboard, or going to object and delete in your 3D viewpoint file menu options. So I'm going to hit and press delete on the keyboard. That's the one I like to use. And next we're going to go ahead and press seven on the numpad. That's seven on the numpad and when we press 7 on the numpad keyboard it now it changes the user view such that the x is on the traditional horizontal axis and the y is on the traditional vertical axis and we know this because the y is always green and it's moving up and it's move and it's on the y axis and the x is always red the red line and it's on the and it's moving across on the horizontal axis or also we know it because if we go to the bottom left corner we see Y axis here and X axis here telling us what axes were on for the viewpoint or what viewpoint axes uh, we are currently viewing currently. So we have that here. So we're gonna go ahead and snap or change our camera viewpoint to this viewpoint that we're seeing right now. And we can do that by hitting Control Alt and zero on our keyboard. So that's Control Alt and zero. And we know, we know that um, the camera is snapped to the viewpoint because the outside of the um, camera is dark gray and the inside where we're actually going to see things in the render view is a lighter gray. And if we press zero to toggle out of camera mode or camera viewing mode and go ahead and press press our middle mouse button, but button to pan around the view, we can see that indeed our camera is locked in to the X and Y Cartesian plane viewpoint that we were in. So I'm gonna press zero to go back into camera mode and we're gonna move on to the next step which is to create a circle. So I'm gonna hit shift and A or you can go to add in your 3D viewpoint file menu and we're going to create a circle which is a mesh and the first thing we're going to do to this circle mesh is that we're going to change the vertices from 32 to 64. Now if we zoom in to this circle we can see that the lines are very obvious that create the edges of the circle and it looks more like a polygon with many sides than say a circle. Now we know by definition a circle is just a polygon with lots of sides. So the more sides we apply to it, the smoother the circle will look. So we're gonna add, right now it's 32 vertices that are making up the circle. We're gonna make it 64 vertices. Good, and that's about double what we had before. And we can see it's a lot smoother here. And I think that's very, important for your pop circle effect to look good. Now, it has to be the first thing you change when you create the circle. The vertices count in the bottom left because once we begin to translate this or transform this in any way or edit this, you know, then the options will disappear and you have to recreate the circle to see those options come up again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move this across. So we're transforming it and translating it. This will disappear on the left and we're gonna move this up to the center of the circle, you know, just for reference and because it, um, just for easy viewing. So we have our circle now, and we're gonna go ahead and toggle to edit mode. So we can go to edit mode by going to this drop down box here, and you click object mode, which is the current mode we're in, and we're gonna to go to edit mode here by clicking this, or you can toggle with tab tab will take you in and out of edit mode. So we're in edit mode and all of these vertices for the circle that we created is selected by default. Now, this is what we want, but if by any chance you go into edit mode and you accidentally click off 
these vertices and it becomes black you know we can select this circle as an entire edge loop by going by selecting two vertices making sure that the two are next to each other so that we select an edge and then we can go to select and go to edge loop good or you can select the two vertices as a shortcut and hit alt left click and that will select the edge loop so we have this now and we're going to go ahead and press e good and e stands for extrude and we can extrude um via mesh and extrude here and we can determine what we're extruding here also so we have more power here but if we press e that extrudes for us and what an extrude is basically if we go ahead and just press G to move this around an extrude is a duplication of the vertices that you had originally selected and they are attached to each corresponding new vertice via an edge so this allows the shape to gain three-dimensional form and you can see it's starting to look more like a cylinder Good by just moving around and viewing it so if we look here the new edge that was duplicated is connected to the old edge via an edge the the new vertice sorry that was duplicated is connected to the old vertice via this edge so that is what extrude does so every selected vertice is duplicated and then attached to the original vertice via an edge and this gives the shape three dimensional form but we don't actually want three dimensional you know um, form from this what we want go ahead and select this again um, and hit E what we actually want from this you know what we actually want from this is we want to keep the edge the um, extrude on top of the original vertices for now we don't want to change that right now we just want to leave it there and we're going to toggle out of edit mode so we know that we have the extrude here uh, but we just want to leave it there we don't want to um, edit it just yet we're going to do that a bit later and to just click off of it you know so that you're not editing it you just right click so the extrude is still there and edit mode is going to remember the selection so we're in so we'll be okay when we come back to edit mode so we're going to press tab, tab on our keyboard <coughs> excuse me on our keyboard and that will take us back to object mode now we're going to go to our properties edit um editor and in our properties editor we're going to navigate to the mesh tab and that is this tab here connotated by three vertices and three edges that make up a triangle we're going to go ahead and left click that and to select it and you're going to go and so you're going to see normals texture space vertex groups and then shape keys and shape keys is what we're after so we're going to go to shape keys plus button and we're going to press it once two times and three times so that we have two shape keys and the basis now the basis is the original form or state of the shape the keys will, will always be morphs of that original shape or form good so we're gonna name this for the pop circle and that's what we want we want the inner circle to be able to be editable and the outer circle to be editable so the key one is going to represent the inner circle and we're going to name it as such so double click it and type inner circle and then we're going to go to key 2 and we're going to double click it and click outer circle good so we have inner circle and outer circle and we're going to select the inner circle now and I'm using camel text here, coda text. Uh, I'm going to take, select the inner circle and then we're going to go back to edit mode. And remember that it, re it we, if you remember, it edit mode remembers the selection state and it still has the extrude selected. So what we're going to do is go ahead and press S on the keyboard, which stands the scale. Good. And it's connotated by the traditional scale. Um, cursor with the double arrows so we see the double arrows here with the crosses and we're gonna press 0 on the keyboard so 
scale and press zero. And what that does is that that brings the vertices um, that's saying that we want to scale all the vertices selected to zero. Yeah, and that's what we want. We want this, the, the vertices to be scaled to zero. And while inner circle is selected in as a shape key, the shape key is going to store the morph change from the original to what we have right here. So we're gonna go ahead and um left we're gonna go ahead and left click and go out and press tab and come out and we can see that the shape has returned to the basis so the inner circle now has stored the end result which is when we have it scaled in to zero and it has stored the original state of the shape and it stores it as as a value from zero to one so zero is the original state and one is the end state so if we want to animate or toggle between those two states, we simply go to the value slider and we slide it up and down. And we can see that it is sliding between the original state of the circle of the circle and the end, end arm state that we just created. Good. And that's for the inner circle. So we want to go ahead and do the same for the outer circle. So we're going to press tab. Oh, we're going to press tab and go into object mode, select the outer circle and then press tab once more to go back into edit mode. Oh, just before you do that, you want to slide this up to one. So slide the inner circle to the end state and we're going to go to outer circle and we're going to set the, out, the end state for the outer circle and press tab. Oops, see. Is everything all right? Yes. Press tab. Then we're going to go ahead and select two vertices here and that will create an that will select an edge and we're going to go on alt and left click to select the edge loop for the outer circle. Oh, we have to make sure before we even do that press tab, make sure that outer circle is selected because this is the state that we want to do now. We've done inner circle already. And when we do that and press tab, we see that we have the option to edit our outer circle end state and we're going to press s very similar to what we did for the inner circle and we're going to press zero again good left click to set that state and press tab so now we have the outer circle moving as well so we have the inner circle and the outer circle and this is a perfect scale up and down without using any transforms and that's why this way of doing pop circles is very very useful good so if we press f12 we notice that there's no outer ring any at all it perfectly overlaps itself and if we scale it down um, if we bring it down the to the two end states making sure the two end states are perfectly one so one for inner circle one for outer circle and press f12 we see that there's nothing to be seen on our render viewpoint even when we zoom in so this is the perfect pop and because we've done it this way it allows us to translate it to scale it to do many things with it without affecting the um, its functionality as a pop so we see it now let's go ahead and animate this we're going to go ahead and making sure both values are set to one we're going to go and insert a keyframe. So we're going to left click and insert keyframe. Good. And then we're going to go down to outer circle and we're going to left click and insert key, right click, sorry, right click, forgive me, and insert keyframe. So both of them are starting at one. Then we're going to move it to 30 and we want the outer circle to come out first. And we're going to insert. In, we're going to um, actually let's move it to 15 instead and we're going to bring the outer circle value down to zero insert keyframe so we can see it coming down good and then we're going to go to the inner circle and we're going to move to frame 20 on our time frame timeline and bring inner circle to zero as well so we have our keys here Let's see if it operates as a pop. I'm going to hit 
Alt and A to play or you can just hit the play button and we see that we have our pop good and there's many things that we can do with this pop now you know if we want to translate it if we don't want the pop to be so big we can edit the values here you know say we want to add a new pop let's go to our dope sheet so it's going to just click here and our options go to dope sheet and we can make this pop quicker by scaling the keyframes closer to each other we can make it slower by bringing the keyframes out further from each other you know we can change the way the pop looks so it's thicker before it reaches the end you know or we can make the pop outline look even thinner you know by bringing the two out the, the two end states closer to each other and in this day you can do quite a bit with your pops good and just for case and point we're just going to duplicate it with control and D, with shift and D and we're going to stagger the duplicate a little bit and we can see we have a, a multiple pop right here and you can stagger even another one and make a third pop so select this give us a different uh, material let's give these a material so that we can see it a bit clearer so let's go into the material which is this burgundy circle right here I'm going to give it a new material and change the fuse to a um, green then I'm going to select this one here and give it a new material and change the fuse to um, red so we can see a bit better how the pop is behaving good so this is a simple pop effect in Blender. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the tutorial section. If you have any um, additional input as to make this tutorial better, I would appreciate that. Please leave that in the comments. That helps me and everybody. I have a lot to learn and I'm happy to learn from you. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And until I see you again with another tutorial, Get up and design a new dawn. Later.